Barrett, and this is episode 44. Today's axiom, it's not what you say, but how you say it, will be our axiom for the final series of shows that we've spent on the stevewicemusic.com slash PATV interactive contest. And for those of you who have left comments and blogs and blog posts and videos and tweets, and it's just so cool to see you guys do that and learn so much. I hope you have too. Uh, for those of you who are just watching along, that's cool. Thank you for watching. Uh, but we really encourage you to, to leave comments. We call you lurkers out there who are just watching the show and not contributing. I love doing the show, but it really helps me get more comments. It keeps me motivated. It helps us all learn more from you because we want to hear what you have to say. You know, feedback's great. So you, you can subscribe to us. We make it easy through iTunes, YouTube, you know, thomasborough.com, thomasborough.tumblr.com for comments. I mean, please, you know, take advantage of that. We really want to hear from you guys. Um, okay, so um, this is episode 44. We're going to continue in our little um, sort of tradition of reading comments. If you leave comments, you might get your comment read on the show. That's kind of fun. Um, so the last episode, we talked about style and the importance of that, especially in regards to Academia. Um, I asked a question of the episode, like I always do, to encourage comments. And the question was all about these celebrity deaths, right? So uh, you know, Billy Mays and Michael Jackson and Farrah Fawcett, Evan Mann. So, you know, if you had a fun story about any of those guys or any of those people, just, you know, share that with us. And um, so I, the overall winner, which is interesting, was by far Billy Mays. And so we're going to kind of tie that into today's show. But Matt left a really interesting comment uh, after that show. And, and he writes here, for a science research class I took in high school, my group compared several stain removers. OxyClean happened to be the most effective. But the group presentation that was selected to pose as Billy Mays. So Matt actually got to be Billy Mays. Uh, while I attempted to imitate a successful body language and tone of voice, we'll get to both those things, uh, my attempt to grow the beard failed. Well, Matt, I have a problem with that too, so I couldn't do that either. <laughs> Consequently, my group members gave me black construction paper to tape my face for the presentation. See, that was great. Was a, I asked for a funny story, so there you go. He continues, on a musical note, thank you for discussing the corner triplets in the A major section. That advice, along with your recommendation to start roles with double stops, helped me improve my musical style in March 26th. Well, that's great, man. I'm so happy that um, that was helpful to you. And uh, thank you so much for leaving a comment. So there we go. All right, so we're going to move on with today's show. Uh, axiom is, it's not what you say, what you say. And that's what Billy Mays was amazing. It wasn't so much what he was selling, it's how he was selling that made him so successful. And I think as performers, you know, we have to do the same thing. You know, up previous episodes up till now, we've been talking about um, small details, like how we're going to learn it, breaking it down. Um, this multiple levels of influence, setting up the groove. Um, we talked about chord progressions in the piece. We talked about some technical things like hypersticking. If you want to know what all that is, go back, go back a little ways and you'll find out. Go back two or three episodes and you'll catch us from the beginning and you'll see that. Um, and last week we talked about style. So we've been kind of going from smaller micro levels to macro levels. And, and when I get ready to, to get a piece out there, when I play it for the first time, um, it's really work that uh, is mostly about sections. And capturing the essence of each section, getting it out there so the audience can catch on to it. So that's how we're going to be Billy Mays today, right? We're going to capture what's here, highlight its best points, and even some of the stuff that's not so great, bring that out so you're going to want to buy it even more, right? So when I see this uh, piece or any piece like this, the first section I see, this first measure, it's just a corral. This is like a palette letter, right? It's just to get us going, all right? Ease the audience into what we're doing so it should be very commonly played. No extraneous motion, you know, I don't want to see, you know, resetting your sticks, and then getting into measure two, that little transition there. Let's not wipe the sweat off our brow or do something else for us, right? Just a nice, invite the audience in, calm body language, just like Billy Mays would do, right? Although I don't know if he was ever calm, actually. But the point is being, is inducing and being the body language that's in the music. So starting at measure two, it's just about the groove, right? You want to establish the groove. Uh, Emmanuel saint -Germain himself piped in a while back and said how important that was. And then we want to set this multiple level, levels of emphasis. So a lot of different levels of notes, of emphasized notes going through. So not just the two notes and the accents, but even more than that. Setting up the groove and setting up the texture of this piece. Okay. And finally, once we do that, we're ready for the melody to come in in measure 10. So this section between 10 and 25 is all about this expressive, somewhat anxious melody that's very, very expressive. So that's what we want to exploit. It's an A minor, so it's a little dark. And if we can kind of create some of that tension, then when we get to 26 in the A major section, it just sort of opens up. The skies open up, the sun comes out, and uh, that's contrast, right? So we got sort of deeper and darker anxiety, tension starting in measure 11, and then, sorry, measure 10, and then in 26, sort of the opposite. So contrast, very, very important. 
and then we repeat back, and the second repeat, um, I'm going to be even freer with the time, kind of milk um, the expressive part of this even more the second time, just to make it a little different, um, so it's not the same both times. And then the outro is just like the beginning, so it just kind of tails off. The piece ends, in my opinion, kind of in measure 30 anyway, and then we just get this A minor sort of thing with it. And we end with a roll, sort of like the measure one. So that's the picture I'm trying to paint. And so, you know, Billy Mays is so successful because he can, he can do exactly what we're saying when he delivered his pitch, right? And so as a performer, we can do exactly the same thing. So I've made a couple other choices here with mallets. I put a slightly softer mallet on the bottom. These two are the same and a slightly harder mallet on the top. That's just the last thing that changed that I had. I think works well as far as building the texture and bringing out the melody with the harder mallet. Um, so I'm going to play kind of Mia for you right now, and then uh, we'll have one final last question of the episode. And the contest for that matter.